Shalom and greetings in the name of Yahweh, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name, singular tense, none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Ladies of the United States and other nations that might be tuning in, um, this broadcast is dedicated to us. <clears throat> well, the devil's holy day is on its way. Um, and where are we as scriptural living moms um, who desire to teach our children the truth and not teach them the way and the traditions of the heathen? Okay, y'all almighty and my husband <laughs> have commissioned me to do this broadcast. I didn't ask for it. So, Titus 2 and 3, the aged women, that would be me. Likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, that set apart, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things. So, ladies, I would like to teach you good things, <laughs> that they may teach the young women to be sober. That means holding to your duty. Teach them to love their husbands. <laughs> My husband said, isn't that a shame that Abba has to instruct the aged women to tell them to teach them to love their husbands and to love their children, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be children, <laughs> children's, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their husbands. The word of Elohim be not blasphemed. Okay, I'd like to share with you good, holy things today. Um, there's a lot of words that we use in our English language that you probably hadn't even thought about looking up. Okay, where do we get holidays? Well, if you break it down, it's H-O-L-I, which should have been a Y, day. Okay, there's nothing holy about Halloween. <laughs> yeah, you heard me right. I didn't say Halloween. We don't want to Halloween. Okay, and I'm going to break that down to you too. Um, Yahweh's people Yahweh who's Yahweh he's your God he's the one who gave you breath as in hallelujah you know when the Holy Spirit falls during while you're praising and singing hallelujah you're singing perfect praise hallelujah means praise in Hebrew Yah is the short form of Yahweh so you apostolic Pentecostals out there who um no, the presence of the Almighty just saturates your very bosom when you're singing hallelujah. You're praising Yahweh. You surely are. Okay, let's get back to Halloween. There's nothing holy about Halloween. Not a thing. And um, I, I find the, uh, the church world, the assembly world, the congregation world, the uh, stay-at-home world, the whatever world that learns the way of the heathen, teaches their children unrighteous, unholy lies. Sure does. And the word, your King James Bible, was written by Israeli men of Israeli descent, the 12 tribes of Israel. The only one that misses the mark on that would be Luke, and he was a proselyte. So, we got... Um, an Israeli word that teaches for Yahweh's people not to learn the way of the heathen. Sure does. That comes from Jeremiah 10 and 1 through 9. It says, Hear ye the word which Yahweh speaketh unto you, O house of Yisrael, you women who claim to serve the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, whose only name is Yahweh, then he's speaking to you. I'm using the King James Version everywhere I see uppercase L-O-R-D, uppercase G-O-D, and the errors of Jehovah and Jesus, I will properly put Yahweh's name back where humans have removed it. Therefore, Jeremiah 10 and 1, Hear ye the word which, uppercase L-O-R-D, Yahweh speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Now, and for the rest of all of y'all that claim to serve the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Verse 2. Thus saith, there's that uppercase L-O-R-D again. Thus saith Yahweh, learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed or fearful 
at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. Okay, what's a heathen? We've gotten into this before. The Hebrew root word is goy, or go ye. All right? Go ye, or goy. These are nations or peoples that are of non Hebrew descent. Or, in other words, they are descendants of Avraham. All right? Some say Abraham. Descendants of Avraham. And Avraham's children did not learn about Halloween. They were not taught pagan Christmas or Easter. They were not taught Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, Father's Day, Grandparents' Day, Groundhog Day. My word, will you look at that? They were not taught all these crazy days that somebody's made up um, for whatever reason. All right? Yahweh had certain feast days that he got the children of Israel together for a whole week. And they celebrated, and everything that they celebrated around was about Yahweh's word. It wasn't about witchcraft. It wasn't about crazy lies of rabbits laying eggs. It wasn't lies about some fat man with a red suit on and a white um, beard that, um, that gets stuck in somebody's chimney bringing somebody toys. <laughs> uh, Yahweh's word does not teach a child uh, fear. And that's what Halloween does. And you moms who claim to have the Holy Spirit, and you got your children dressing up like Bible characters, you are paralleling to that same junk, that same trash. And Yahweh's word is against familiar spirits and witchcraft of every kind. And the first place that's recorded is in Leviticus 19.31. Regard not them that have familiar spirits. That's people that um, get into uh, evoking the dead. Neither seek after wizards, which is a male witch, to be defiled by them. I am Yahweh your Elohim. Leviticus 20 and 6 says, and the, oh, that's the Old Testament. Where do you think we get the Ten Commandments from the Old Testament? The first blood covenant. We know we got a new blood covenant. But the first blood covenant was a shadow of what was to come. Nevertheless, this stuff was not done away with. The only thing that was done away with was we got a new priesthood, Yahweh Mashiach, who robed himself in flesh. The other thing is we got um, we, we don't have animal sacrifices anymore as Yahweh robed himself in flesh and became that sacrifice. Okay, simple. This is simple stuff. Leviticus 20 and 6 says, And the soul that turneth after such as have familiar spirits and after wizards to go a whoring after them, I will even set my face against that soul and will cut him off from among his people. Leviticus 20 and 27. A man also or a woman that hath a familiar spirit or that as a wizard shall surely be put to death. They shall stone them with the stones, and their blood shall be upon them. A witch is not suffered to live. Of course, now we got a new blood covenant. Yahweh has mercy on witches. Yahweh can cause witches to repent. And all you people that belong to that religion, Wiccan. That's Witches Anonymous. Okay, Yahweh can deliver you from your lies. Yahweh can deliver you from your whoredom. Yahweh can deliver you from these evil, familiar, wicked spirits of witchcraft. Yahweh can deliver you. Yahweh can deliver you from pharmakia. You know what pharmakia is? Sorcery. Pharmakia goes into pharmaceutical drug users. So you addicted pharmaceutical drug users pay attention because you are no better off than a street junkie. And it's time for Yahweh's women to stand up if you claim to have the Holy Spirit and repent of this evil. And you're teaching your children and setting the precedent to go ahead and do it. If you dress up like a Bible character, you're making mockery of Yahweh's word on this unholy night 
That Halloween night is dedicated to witches. It's their high holy day. What's the matter with you? My goodness, we're going to get into some the meanings of some of these words. We're going to break it down. I did some etymology study on these words. And I'm going to bring it out, y'all, as well, if i got some time here. But the word comes first. Deuteronomy 18 and 10. There shall not be found among you anyone, anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. All right? For all that do these things are an abomination unto Yahweh. And because of these abominations, Yahweh thy Elohim doth drive them out from before thee. Yahweh gave Israel a promise. And those baptized full of the Holy Spirit of Yahweh have power over these demon forces of hell only because, well, the scripture says it, rejoice not that devils flee from you, but rejoice in that your name is written in the book of life. Therefore, I rejoice that Kathy Kirk's name is written in the book of life. I teach the truth. I live the truth by Yahweh's grace and mercy because I live in holiness under his blood because of his great sacrifice. And I thank him for his great sacrifice. So Yahweh's word teaches you women who are supposed to have the Holy Spirit and not an unholy spirit or a seducing spirit to teach your children righteousness. Teach your children holiness. In fact, Leviticus 10 and 11 is one of the first places it talks about teaching your children. Did you know that the word children is found 1,803 times in your Bible? It sure is. And, and listen to this. 1,000, now listen, 1,803. That 1, 8, and 3 adds up to 12. Isn't that wonderful? The 12 tribes of Israel. Leviticus 10 11 says, And that ye may teach the children of Israel all the statutes which Yahweh hath spoken to them by the hand of Moshe or Moses. And it gets into this in Deuteronomy 4 and 1. It says, Now therefore hearken, O Israel, and all you women out there who claim to serve the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Un- okay, hearken unto the statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you, for to do them that you may live. And go in and possess the land which Yahweh Elohim of your fathers giveth you. Okay, now we know that that's talking to Israel. That we're going to go and possess the land of Israel. Okay, for us, that's born of the water and of the spirit, we look for a city that's to come, whose builder and maker is Yahweh Almighty. This world is not mine. I look for a city, new Yerushalayim, to come down. I want to teach my children true ways, not lying ways. I want to teach my children good things, not lies. I want to teach my children righteousness, not witchcraft and Halloween or any other pagan heathen days. So Yahweh says in Jeremiah 10 and 2, Thus saith Yahweh, learn not the way of the heathen. Okay, you women who claim to serve the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and have attached yourself to Israel, then you need to repent and ask Yahweh to forgive you for dressing your children up as scriptural characters, holy characters, on an unholy high day of the witches. Learn not their way. Don't do them. Of course, you can get into the rest of this and talks about cutting down a tree and talks about decking it with silver and gold. We know that's talking about the pagan Uh, Christmas tree. But let's get into this Halloween, okay? I did my own little etymology study here, so you can take it for what it's worth. You can look this stuff up yourself. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to look things up. I know what the scripture says. If I did not have word studies, etymology studies, I've got scripture that tells me to stay away from witchcraft, to stay away from the ways and traditions of heathen nations. Yahweh's word does not teach 
anywhere to celebrate birthdays. There was only two celebrated in the scriptures. They were heathen birthdays. Pharaoh's birthday. Herod's birthday. John the Baptist got his head cut off at, um, uh, at, at uh, Herod's birthday. The baker lost his, uh, hung, got hung on Pharaoh's birthday. These were heathen practices. We know that the Mashiach's birthday was not celebrated. There's no place where they celebrated pagan Christmas. All these are heathen customs and traditions. And if you learn your history correctly, Christmas was forbidden to be celebrated in the United States, much less Halloween, the celebration of witches who raise the dead, who talk to the dead, who cast out charms and spells and instill fear in your child. Let's do some etymology study. We already got scripture. We really don't need this etymology study. But just for you intellectuals who think you have to have something intellectual and the scripture's not good enough for you, then this is for you. The meaning of hallow. Okay, we have hallow ween. I just broke it down myself, looked it up myself. The meaning of hallow is a cry of surprise. Okay. It's a cry of, su- of, of surprise. This is where we get, hello, <laughs> when you answer the phone. Hello? Or some people might be saying, hell is low. Hell is low. Heaven is high. I knew a brother years ago. He wouldn't answer his phone, hello. He'd say, heaven is high. <laughs> okay. So we got, hello, which is a cry. It's a cry out um, to shout out something. That's what hello is, is to cry out something. Okay, what is the meaning of wean? You ever look this stuff up? The meaning of wean is to think or to suppose or to have an imagination or uh, to, to think or believe or it could be a charm. Huh. Thus, Halloween could mean shouting a greeting of a thought, imagination, or a charm, but for whose benefit? Whose benefit? Ever heard anybody say boo? <laughs> It comes from a raising of the voice a lot of times to instill fear. The real definition of boo gets into a lot of stuff, okay? The real definition of boo gets into um, scaring somebody or uh, gets into, um, well, let me read this definition here. Hang on, and I'll give it to you verbatim. All right, I'm taking my uh, definition of the word boo from an exceedingly old, old, uh, complete and unabridged The Little and Ives Webster's Dictionary, okay? This thing goes back into the 1950s. It's nice, big, and thick. It's probably about um, a hand span thick. Okay, this word boo means an initiative sound made by a cow. (laughs) It also gets into an exclamation, uttered to express disapproval or contempt, also to chase away an animal. To utter an explanation, to say boo, to chase away by uttering a cry. So boo is something to instill fear. Yahweh's word doesn't instill fear in us. This is the word boo. All right. Ever heard of the word boogeyman? (laughs) All right. This boogeyman gets into a lot of junk. You can get a fine. You can do a big uh, read up in the Wikipedia on Boogeyman and where this thing came from. But I'm just going to pick out a couple because the scripture is more important than this junk. The scripture teaches to stay away from this junk. But for you people who think you know more than the scripture, this is for you. Okay, the Boogeyman is a mythological creature in many cultures used by adults. You moms and dads, well, this direction, this, this is directed at women. This is a women's broadcast, okay? Used by you moms to frighten children into compliant behavior. The monster has no specific appearance, and conceptions about it can vary drastically from household to household within the same community. Okay, this reading goes on and says, In many cases, he has no set appearance in the mind of an adult or child, but is simply a nonspecific embodiment of terror terror. Parents may tell their children that if they misbehave, the boogeyman's going to get you. Boogeyman may target a specific mischief. For instance, a boogeyman that punishes children who suck their thumbs or general misbehavior, depending on what the purpose needs serving. In some cases, the boogeyman is a nickname for the devil. 
Shame on you moms who instill fear in your children. Hey, you, I've got about 12 pages on this, and I'm certainly not going to read it because it's a bunch of garbage. But I'm going to read you what the Word says. Okay, all this... Oh, oh, I left out one little important detail here. Okay, this Halloween, where does it come from? Okay, the, the original is Savin or Samhain, or can get into Soin, which is Halloween. Known most popularly as Halloween marks the end of the third and final harvest is a day to commune with the uh, um, with and remember the dead and is a celebration of the eternal cycle of reincarnation. Okay, you get into all the all the things where it gets into um, when the old god dies and the crone goddess mourns him deeply and it gets into all kinds of crazy junk. All right, all this does is instill fear in your children. And Yahweh's word does not teach us to teach our children to have a spirit of fear. Yahweh's word is completely the opposite. And I've got scripture after scripture verse here that teaches Holy moms who claim to have the Holy Spirit and not some stinking, rotten, seducing spirit to teach their children in the way of righteousness. All right, Psalms 23 and 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Yahweh's word comforts us. We don't have to worry about some Halloween witch or some devil. The devil knows that there's one Yahweh and trembles. 1 John 4, 18, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. Mom, do you want your child tormented? Shame on you. You don't have to tell them lies and stories. Get the get the uh, the, uh, the switch if they're bad. Yahweh says use a rod of correction. It doesn't say instill that kind of fear in them by telling them lies. What's wrong with you? Okay. Psalms 27 and 1. Yahweh is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Yahweh is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though when hosts should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, and this will I be confident. And it goes on and on and on and on. Psalms 56 and 4. In Elohim... In Yahweh, I will praise his word. In Elohim, I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. Mom, you better start teaching your children how to die a righteous death. Because we're fixing to have this nation topsy-turvy. Yahweh showed me many, 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 many years ago. A black hand came out from the north, picked up our White House, and overturned it. Now... This nation is being turned over to um, new rules and new laws, which are not Yahweh's rules and not Yahweh's laws. So are we willing to lay our head on the chop block and our children's head on the chop block to stand for the word? Where are you, mom? We don't teach our children fear of junk. We teach them to fear the word of Yahweh. Okay, Psalms... um, Psalms 56 and 4. I already read that. Psalms 118 and 6. Yahweh is on my side. I will not fear what man can do. um, What can man do unto me? Isaiah 41, 13. For Yahweh thy Elohim will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. Hebrews 13 and 6. So that we may boldly say that Yahweh is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. This is Hebrews 13 and 6. My goodness, it gets into all these verses. I mean, where are we, Mom, in our walk? Where are you? It have you what who has rocked you to sleep? The cares of this life? The cares of this life are rocking you to sleep and you've lost your relationship with Yahweh Almighty. You've allowed trials and tests to discourage you to the place where you're just flat despondent. It's time to stand up and be counted for Yahweh's namesake. It's time to stand up and wake up. Wake up and see what's going on around you. We're not going to stop what happens in this United States or the entire world. We're not going to stop the new world order. We are not going to stop the microchip that wants to identify human, that mark of the beast. We're not going to stop any of this. But we do need to stop the enemy from making our soul afraid that we should take part in this world's garbage. 
we need to be to the place, and I pray y'all will make me to that place, that when I am faced with torture or death because I will not deny my faith, that y'all will, will give me great grace to endure torture or imprisonment and even death by, a, by a, uh, whatever my death would be. Y'all will help us to stand firm in the truth and not teach our children lies. And you women who claim to have the Holy Spirit and allow your children to dress up like Bible characters on an unholy Halloween night, even if it's with a church group, shame on you. You make a mockery and spit in Yahweh's face by choosing to make mockery on the devil's high holy day. Shame on you. May Yahweh cause you to repent and search this stuff out. This is not something for you to do. And you women out there who uh, make Hanukkah a gift-giving time, it never was a gift-giving time. Gifts were only started being given because they had to compete with pagan Christmas. All the all Hanukkah is is a time of dedication. It's a time of dedication of the temple. Now we are the temple of the living Yahweh, ladies. If the Holy Spirit dwells in us, we need to have a dedication every day, a Hanukkah every day within our spirit, within our heart, a relationship that hangs on and keeps on keeping on in the faith, in the face of danger, in the face of fear. Yahweh has not given us the spirit of fear, ladies. He's given us the spirit of power and of love and a sound mind, a sound mind, if so be that the Holy Spirit dwells with us. And I see so many women who's had the same exact experience that I've had through the years, and I've watched the devil over a period of 15, 20, 25 years rock them to sleep. And the first thing that they do is they cut off those long locks of hair that y'all will give them when they pray and prophesy. That, that gives them power on their head because of the angels. I see them deck out with makeup. I see them take off women's holy clothing and wear men's apparel. That abomination unto Yahweh. My goodness. I gotta stop. If you want to know why Yahweh is your only Savior, Redeemer, and Mashiach, please write to Jerry or Kathy. Write to Jerry or Kathy. We mail out free audio CDs and scriptural literature on why your God and your Elohim and Mashiach is only named Yahweh, nothing else. Okay, write Jerry or Kathy. Our mailing address is 775 McDonald Road. Again, 775 McDonald Road. Donald Road, Covington, Georgia. That's Covington, Georgia. That's the United States of America, Georgia. Our zip code is 30014. Again, 30014. We invite you to call us at 770-784-0703. That number again is 770-784-0703. For those of you who have online access, we invite you to uh, go to the YouTube site. And watch my husband teach from the Hebrew Scriptures using your King James Version how that the name of Yahweh has been removed from his word. So when you go to the YouTube site, type in Hour of Truth 777. And you can access my husband's televised broadcasts online. Again, go to the YouTube site. Type in Hour of Truth Seven, 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 and watch my husband teach from the Hebrew Scriptures using your King James Version how that the name of Yahweh has been removed from His Word. Ladies, the purpose of my broadcast is not to tell you that you don't have nothing, because that would be a lie. The Scripture says unto every man, or for us women, is given the measure of faith. I don't care who you are, whoever has lived that's human, women or men walking, has been given a measure of faith. And Yahweh deals with us in that measure of faith no matter what kind of religion or what kind of walk we're in. If you're an atheist, I know you're not an atheist because Yahweh's word says you're not. He's given you a measure of faith. And Yahweh deals with that human 
all through their life, presenting them truth. And if they accept that truth, he gives them a little more and a little more and a little more. And it's time for Yahweh's people to not get stagnated in their growth. The purpose of my broadcast is to provoke you to repent and study. Until next week, Shalom.